Hello and welcome to part 26 of our Shadowbringers Let's Play. Last time, Ishtola was returned to us. She was not lost. Uh, Emmett Selk returned her. And that means we can continue on towards the dungeon without having to mourn the loss of Ishtola. So let's go talk to Almet and see what happens next. The entrance to the Katana Rabble lies open and Almet would see you on your way. Oh yeah, we're on to our next dungeon, I believe. The next Light Warden. With the Ulmorans gone and your companion now returned, I think it best you go now before they can regroup. With magic flowing once more through the Great Pyramid of Uxner, the entrance to the Katana Ravel should now be open. Before we leave, Uriange, did you discover anything that may suggest the Light Warden hides elsewhere? Nay, though we have but little time before the Yomoran's most unwelcome arrival, we scoured the nearby environs and spoke once more with the one called Kirill. Having hearkened to her tale, it is my judgment that the Sin Eater which her late mother did espy was indeed the being we seek, and that it most likely resided in the vicinity of Rectika Falls. In the absence of any subsequent sighting, I have no reason to believe our quarry has sought out a new sanctuary. And given the considerable difficulty we face in reaching the falls, we may be certain it hath not been disturbed by man. Then our course is clear. We must navigate the Katana Ravel and make for Rectika Falls. Though you see it is but another obstacle to be navigated, the Katana Ravel is the oldest and most sacred of our temples. The accumulated knowledge of the Empire is said to reside within. Knowledge which is rightly yours as allies of Ranka, you are welcome to explore. I fully intend to survey every ilm of it once our mission is complete. Were the Emperor still alive, he would be overjoyed to hear you say so. But I must warn you, though the way is open, it will still be heavily guarded. Do discourage trespassers and test the worth of our allies. It had to be so. Be careful in there. Head east and you will find the path of Azura Flowers leading to the Ravel. I wish you safe passage through its halls. I just, sorry, that reminded me of the Azura Dragoon and now I'm just realizing that we're in this completely different world from the source and I'm wondering what's going on back in Eorzea. Like, <laughs> what is going on in the source? Because I pretty much forgot about it. Master Matoya, I know I cannot dissuade you from going, so please, promise me you'll return safely. The Knights Blessed need you. You need not worry, Runar. I shall return and bring with me a long-awaited gift. One of the Knights Blessed will treasure now and forevermore. Now, let us away. Okay, where is this place? Okay, let's continue this way. I don't know if we went the right way, but we're gonna continue. Yeah, I think this will connect. Oh, they're, they're mandrels. Kind of remind me of lemurs, though. going the right way. Good for us, because I was like, we're totally lost, aren't we? Oh, and everybody's here already. You can 
feel the ether flowing through the door. A gentle push may be all that's required. Our earlier efforts were not in vain, it seems. Stay on your guard, Cha-Cha. We know not what awaits us inside. All right, I guess we're ready to do the Katana Ravel. Okay, there's owls. I definitely expected owls, because that's what adorned everything else. Who is this guy, though? Very interesting. Like, what is he? Is he made out of stone as well? He definitely looks mechanical to me. stuff to hide behind, so we're gonna hide behind. a little bit too late. We got through the first little bit, though. Onwards through the temple. Ooh. Alright. Definitely expected some of these guys. We've got the stones. I feel like that's because one of our DPS has healing type things. And that's all that matters. All right, so we are on to our first boss. on the other side is moving.
Live and good. No loots for us. Ooh, so this is a proper cave now. Proper cave art that I'm trying to check out as we run by. Oh, I should really, really be healing our our tank though. down out of nowhere. Not absolutely terrifying or anything. getting attacked by that. Someone please help. I would like to not be attacked by that. Walls are just made for the breaking, huh? Oh my goodness. Alright, we've got a giant back squatch. <laughs> I've never heard of such a thing. But it sounds terrifying.
troubles. These things seem to fall inward. religious person, but I seem to be falling out as if I am one today. Alright, let's catch up. Down the waterfalls. straight to the thick of things, huh? Everybody's alive, this is all that matters. <laughs> that is my my motto, I guess. People aren't dead. Oh my goodness, this is the light warden. Are we already the light warden? This one seems to have gone by so fast. I feel like it's like the three-headed dog, but with monkeys. Whee! I just love how Lala's starfish. It's one of my favorite things about Lala's, is when they jump, they just like, starfish so hard.
all the poison. to be fine. We made it through, so I didn't even need to know. But yay. Yeah, that's really pretty. I love how, like, bright the head is and how light the, uh, the rest of the body is. It just really pops. I like it a lot. Definitely a neat little dungeon. Oh, I have this already. Because I did this once before. But we had to kick somebody. Because they were taking so long. So there's a lot of waiting. I wonder what's going to happen to us. I know Oriange and Yushtola had that conversation about what ingesting all this light was doing to Chacha. So I'm just waiting for Dark Chacha to happen after <laughs> one of these. Oh my goodness. It can't be Heidelin, right? So what is it we're gonna see? Oh my goodness, so much light. More light than a tiny Lala body can handle. Like, like. Well, eyes are still not black as night, so we're good. But what's gonna happen to the sky? That's so many stars. The Light oh. Warden is dead. The Blessed's prayers have been answered. Aye, that they have.
Her condition yet troubleth thee? It does. Though she shows no immediate signs of corruption, the danger remains. She must be told. Please tell us. I really want to know. Would you describe it to me, Marie-Ange? Paint for me a picture with your words. A sea of shimmering stars. Diamonds strewn across a raven gown. Boundless and beautiful. It is an exquisite sight, not unlike that of the source. Calm and gentle and forgiving. I can see it. For however deep the void or wide the expanse, there is no shore so distant as to be beyond the reach of light. Ominous though that may sound, given our present travails. Well fought. Let us return home. Oh, that's neat. The murals. If I am not mistaken, they predate the Empire. How can you tell? A peculiarity of the paint. Most are made from mineral-based pigments. But whatever was used here is older than anything I have ever seen. It's such a neat area. I feel like this definitely feels like being in an in a underground cavern somewhere. According to Almut, this sanctuary was built to preserve the wisdom of the ancients. What events do these murals commemorate, I wonder? Oh, is Emmett Felt gonna tell us? Must you always linger after defeating your enemies? Navigating these halls on foot is exhausting. I'm so sorry we've tired you, Emmett. Come to lead us to safety, have you? <laughs> he thinks we're lost down here. We're taking so long to admire the artwork. I was bored. But how is the hero of the hour? I don't like him staring at Chacha. Hmm. <laughs> Makes Fighting her fit, uneasy. Keep up the good work. You're plotting something. I mean, he's an ass and he's always plotting. Every hour of every day. But never you mind about that. As I have told you a thousand times before, I like to watch. Nothing more. Well, I would quit this place and I suggest you do the same. There is yet work to be done. I feel like you should like this place. He was all worried about the light everywhere. This is the darkest it gets. Thanks, Alda. Let's leave it, okay? Oh, there is a sight to bring a tear to the eye. I wonder if Emmett Salk knows about this. You recognize these scenes? That I do. Indeed, there was a time when anyone and everyone would. It looks like something dark and something light. And an explosion. Is that a calamity? Until one calamitous day when the world was divided across ten and three reflections, sundering the land and all who dwelled upon it. And the worst part? No one could remember it. Not really. Just <laughs> fragments and fleeting memories of an achingly familiar world. Interesting. A vision shared of a paradise lost, preserved only in song and scripture and pain. Once upon a time. Yet here we find ourselves again, to look 
learn and remember. Then share with us the stories you know so well. We are listening. Yeah, exactly. I would like to know more. Before the Great Sundering, there was one world. A world that knew naught but peace and prosperity. Until it was faced with a crisis. Unprecedented. Terrifying. Civilization found itself perched upon a precipice, staring into oblivion. But through prayer and sacrifice, the will of the star was made manifest. Zodiac was his name. Okay. And by his grace was the calamity averted. We know of the Zodiac. Zodiac. I thought we were not on Team Zodiac, though. A savior mighty and magnificent, deserving of reverence and gratitude. One would have thought, yet some thought otherwise. From the fears of these naysayers would rise Hydalin, she who was to serve as his shackles, to bind him and hold him in check. Wait, so have we been worshipping the wrong go god this whole time? And so they fought, and they fought, and they fought, and in the end, Hydalin was victorious. With all her strength, she smote him, dealing a blow so devastating that it split the very fabric of reality. And thus was Zodiac banished and his being divided. That concludes today's lesson on long forgotten history. Though I imagine your mother would offer a rather contradictory account, as is her wont. Okay, so I, I, I vaguely recall another faction worshipping Zodiac and us being very much against this. <laughs> and um, we've been doing whatever Heidelin says this entire time. So, I mean, I feel like it can only take you know, what Emmett Selk says with a little bit of truth, maybe. So I'd like to hear the other side of things, but, uh... Wow, we're gonna feel really awful if we've been, uh, following someone who led to the first calamity. I'm sorry, I can only assume I misheard. But it sounded an awful lot like you were implying both Zodiac and Hydaelyn are not gods. But... What? Not gods of the first? Is that what you thought these paintings depicted? Or... Oh... Oh... They are gods after a fashion, yes but no different from the kind with which you are so intimately acquainted. Formed of faith and prayer, of conviction and devotion. Though they too are primals. The eldest and most powerful of primals. Which we've been very much against. You've spun quite a tale. Yeah, I don't know what to think of any of this. Yet you have not explained the role of the Assians in all of this. How is it you are privy to ancient secrets lost to time? Now they're gonna tell us that the Assians are actually gods, and... <laughs> and we're not gonna know what the world is anymore. <laughs> finally, finally you ask the right question. And shrewd questions warrant honest answers. Oh my goodness. All right, Emmett. Tell us. Tell us what we need to know. But please be gentle. We Assians know because it is our history. Our story. 
It was we who summoned Zodiac. Oh. We natives of that sundered paradise. Now, do you see why we yearn for the great rejoining? Okay, this makes this makes sense. I mean, they painted a really bleak picture of what rejoining would be. Because I feel like when the Imperials were talking about it, it was just blood and death and mayhem, but they just want peace? Even though they're all about chaos? Like, are they chaos to get to peace? Like, it's just a means to an end. For our world. For our people. For all creation to be made whole again. Wouldn't you wish for the same? I mean, I guess we're kind of fighting right now for our world to be made in the way that we want it to be, to stay together. So I guess they're just doing the same thing. Oh. Well, that is quite a lot to think about. That was an enlightening experience, though not in the way I had hoped, indeed. 100% agreed here. Do you suppose there is any truth in Emmett Selk's claims? I honestly... I don't know. It's really hard. I feel like Emmett Selk is very much, like, deadpans. So there's no, you know... over-emotional bit about it being their world originally and stuff like that that you'd find with anyone else. Um, so I'm, I'm just curious to see if going forward we find more truth one way or the other, if, if, if the Asians are lying to us or not. Oh. Thank you so much for watching. I definitely appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. I feel like we learned a lot <laughs> and I'm still digesting. Um, I do hope we, we find out um, what the closest to the truth is between the whole Zodiac and Heidelin situation and the initial splitting of worlds. I kind of feel poorly for how we've treated the Asians now that we know slightly more about them. I still don't I still don't feel good about all the chaos and stuff that they've sown in the source. Um, just with all the death and destruction that the Imperials have brought at the Asian's hands, but I guess I understand it a little bit more, but I'm not quite sure about why they're doing all this chaos to get back to to peace. That sounds a little bit odd to me, but hopefully we'll learn more as we continue on through Shadowbringers. Uh, if you enjoyed yourself, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and go follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram as well, and I will see you next time for more adventures in the first.